welcome you to this uh, special month-long session in June of uh, having Dr. Frank Hudson to teach. And we're going back to the basics, we're saying. So uh, on Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and our regular services on Sunday, we welcome you to uh, join us as uh, he presents these back to the basics. Thank you. As we speak so much about divine design, we're back there again. When we're talking about the basics and the things that God's wanting to do in our lives, the first thing that we need to look at are the spiritual things. Everything comes out of the spirit. You're never going to find anything eternal or anything that's rooted in truth that is going to be of the natural realm. Its origins will be of the spirit. So it's essential, it's vital for us to cast down the thoughts and the imaginations of even intellectual knowledge, even those things that are true, they can puff us up. They can get us in a place where we think we know things that we really don't know. We have a knowledge of them, but we're not really known by them. Those things need to become identified in us and one with us, intertwined in our being, so that just like if you put cream in coffee, Good luck getting that out of there, right? The Spirit and the Word need to be poured in us to, bear, to where it becomes a mixture inseparable. And that's, I believe, is the, the design of God. And I believe that's the tool that He's bringing into play right now is that He's pouring Himself into us, fresh and new, in a new way, with a new illumination, a new... Um, Revelation, if you will, so that he can bring to life the things that he has placed in us and hopefully put to death the stupid stuff that we brought along. Amen? Amen. Some of the worst things we could ever have are goals and aspirations birthed after the flesh, running after the flesh, running after carnal things. Because they're only going to detour us. They're only going to hinder us. They're only, they're only going to be there. That's why the Father said, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added to us. It's vitally important that we take to heart those very words of what he was talking about. Because everything begins in the spirit and it has its life in the spirit. There is no ending to it. But there is a life in it. And... We've had all these substitutions that religion has to offer. We have all these different things. And God says, I want to bring you back to the place that got you started. How did you get started in Christ? The very thing, it was, it was all him revealing himself, communicating himself to us, letting us know truth about us. And when we saw basically where we were in, in the plan of things, we desire the love of God more than the love of man. We desire the forgiveness of God more than the favor of man. And we chose him and we run after him and his spirit began to work in our life to transform us, to change us. But at some point, somewhere along the way, we become educated. We become knowledgeable and we think we know things. And the truth is, we don't know anything the way we should know it. We don't know anything to the level that God can reveal it. And, and I believe that that's where the rubber meets the road. I think that's where the confrontation needs to take place in each and every one of us, is that we are able to acknowledge, I know nothing as I should know. So that we are opening up everything within our being within our intellectual realm, our knowledge. And there's, don't hear what I'm not saying. There's nothing wrong with being intellectual. It just needs to be truth. Amen. Amen. There's a lot of people intellectual. They don't have any truth to share with you. They just have stuff. They just have communication. They have things that can clutter the mind, things that can try to confuse you, put you on a rabbit trail, the things that try to excuse or... or um, do whatever to get you moving in a direction that is not fruitful for the kingdom of God, that's not fruitful for Christ to become alive inside of your life. And God wants every single one of us 
to have the courage and the confidence to stop that forbidden communication. And that's what it is. If we'll hear it the way the Spirit identified it, even in the book of Genesis, in the Garden of Eden, God said, stay away from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It's the fruit of it. That's what he, he, They could have walked up and hugged up on the tree. Just don't eat the fruit of it. We are in and out of people who have fruit that come from that tree of knowledge of good and evil every day. And it leads us away from the truth. It leads us into a place of uncertainty, fears, anxieties, confusions. It leads us down places of hopelessness, rejection, rebellion, anger, rage, uh, all these other things. It can break you because there's no truth in it. There's no hope in it. It's just knowledge. It's there to weigh you down. It's there to break you down. There is a wisdom that is earthly, sensual, and devilish. And it comes from the forbidden language. Mm. Now God wants to bring us into the language that he wanted Adam and Eve to only have. He wanted them to have nothing to do with all of the things that was going on around them. Yet, the very instant they disobeyed and needed the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, all they could see was the things going on around them. But now, in Christ Jesus, he who has an ear to hear, let him hear, or an eye to see, let him see. Look beyond the natural. And we talked about the different realms of the kingdom. We talked about the first heaven, we talked about the second heaven, the third heaven, and how important it is to know what it is that you are actually learning. What are you gaining knowledge of? Is this knowledge that is truth? Is this knowledge that is unacceptable? Is it knowledge that's questionable? Is it knowledge that should even be permitted into our memory banks? And as we begin to allow God to be the one who puts the desires in our heart and not the things around us, you see, we start desiring we need, you know, a better job, we need more money, we need a bigger place, we need a better car, we need all these other things, and all of that, all of it, without exception, all of that comes from the forbidden language. All of it. Jesus said, don't take any thought for that stuff. But we said, well, yeah, we've we got to care for our own. Do you know that said that he who doesn't care for his own, he who, who doesn't provide for his own is worse than an infidel. It doesn't say anything about going out here and working a job. You know what it's talking about? The only way you can really provide for yours righteously and truthfully is to be in relationship with God and allow God to birth. He said, when you seek the kingdom, I'll add these things to you. But we go to add those things to us while we're seeking the kingdom. The problem is, ten years later, we're no closer to the kingdom than we were but we're deep over our head into the job. 20 years down the road, sometimes we're deep over our head in debt and, and hoping that we can work long enough to get our debts paid off and the kingdom's still nowhere in sight. God says that our knowledge and our understanding and the wisdom of the kingdom of God will allow us to apprehend and take possession of the things that already belong to us that we have no knowledge of. Amen? So, you know, at some point, we, we begin to challenge, we begin to examine, and to look at the things that we believe are the essence of life and are the emblems of success when the Spirit of God comes along and says, I don't see anything. I don't see anything beneficial. I don't see anything eternal. I see nothing that's going to leave this realm and go with you. Everything that you have accumulated is going to be left here when you go. Amen? You see, when we, when we start looking at the reality, we, we're talking about back to the basics. Back to the basics is this, is that you have been already transported into the kingdom of God. You're a spirit being, so you have a dual existence. You have an existence in the realm of the Spirit, in the kingdom of God, where you have authority and power, and you're recognized as royalty. We also have an earthly vessel. Those who have went on before us have lost their earthly vessel, but they now are permanent citizens of the kingdom of heaven. They're still there. It touches the earth already. We're not waiting for the kingdom to come. 
Jesus was the one bringing the kingdom. He told them while he was here, how do we pray? Pray this way. Your kingdom come, your will be done. And then Jesus goes out, brings the kingdom, and does his will. Amen. Amen. He fulfilled that prayer. He's telling them, ask for this, because that's what he's talking, that's what the Father's talking about. I have manifested to bring this stuff into existence. So now we find ourselves in a place that really is not conducive for growth in Christ. We have a realm that we are existing in that wants to pull us to the left, to the right, pull us down a pathway that has absolutely nothing to do with true spiritual reality. But yet we know we need these things to survive. That God said with food and clothing, be content. Anybody ever be content with just food and clothing? Mm -hmm. hey, me either. I mean, that's just, I mean, we're talking about reality, right? Excuse me. That's the way life has been. But here's the thing. We don't like what life's been producing. Anybody crazy about what's being produced in your life right now? How many believes there's more to Christ? There's more to the kingdom of God. God did not. He wanted us to have the Zoe life. The abundant life. The, the, the God kind of life. And he wanted us to live it so so vehemently in this realm that others will look at it and say, I want what you got. But instead, we're trying to get what they got. And we spend our whole life pursuing the things that anybody could get. Go get an education, put in the hard hours, put in the long hours, do all these things. You can obtain those things. The problem is you've lost your life. I don't mean you're going to hell. I mean you've spent your whole life the years that the moth, the canker worm, the palmer worm, the caterpillar, and the locust have eaten it up because we've been pursuing these things that absolutely is not going with us. And God says, if you'll find out about the kingdom, you'll realize you already have all that. But you don't have it where it's going to spoil, where moth and, and rust and everything is going to get to it. You have it in the kingdom, and it's eternal and it is a reward or an inheritance that you'll have forever. And somewhere we have to distinguish and realize our Father is not lying to us. He's absolutely not lying to us. He said if we seek and run after those things, we're going to lose our life. He doesn't mean you're going to fall over dead. Eventually you probably will. But what he's simply saying is you're going to miss every opportunity that he's given you in life to glorify him. To be honored, to grow, to mature, to feel the real satisfaction that doesn't come from accomplishing things in the natural, but accomplishing things in the spiritual. Amen? I, let me tell you, I could never describe and can't think of anything I could ever do that, that measured up to me watching a dead person's eyes open and him take a breath that lasted 30 to 40 seconds. And his family received him back alive. Amen. Amen. Believe me, I, I've done about every drug you can mention, except the new ones in the last 20, 30 years. But the all the others, you know what? They never met. There's nothing even come close. There's absolutely nothing that will catch up with what God's capable of doing in our life. But if we miss the basics, seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, that right relationship, that's what righteousness means. In its simplest form, it's having a great relationship with God. He said, I want you to seek that. Well, I love God. Well, do, when's the last time you communed with him? When's the last time you had a sit down and a face to face with God? When's the last time you reached out and touched his hand or went to sit in his lap? When's the last time you heard him laugh? When, you see, what I'm, I'm talking about a relationship. Could you imagine if you had the kind of relationship with a husband or wife or a child or a mom or dad the way you have one with God? It'd be unacceptable. It'd be almost like non-existent. Well, God's more real than they are. And that's what he's trying to get our attention to is so that we can begin to take on the image of him because we put on the mind of Christ. You begin thinking Christ-like. We, we, we don't go on hammering after the stupid things 
that most of the time you don't even achieve. And if you do, it's never the joy you thought it was going to be. There's pain and there's, there's all this other stuff that comes with it. Then you've got responsibility and accountability. Then you've got to protect it. You've got to do all these other things. And God says, you ain't got to protect nothing I got. I'll keep it for you. Amen? Do you know Jesus had healing and salvation for everybody on the face of the earth? That would ever be born? He had it within his power for all of them. And when he set it up and established it, he established it for all of them forever. Now they're not cashing in on it. But you see, we're, we are, Jesus laid his life down so you could live. And the simple thing he said, he said, look, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go live your life for me. Amen? There's more out there that's in the place that you were when I found you. That's what the Spirit says. There's others out there that don't know the way. They think they found the way. They think they're doing good because they got good things. But the good things they think they've got are not good things. They're bad things. And he wants us to be that light that we are the, we are the spirit of prophecy. We are the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's nobody can tell how God changed your life like you can. We don't need to go talking about Paul and James and John and Matthew and all. Tell about you. You're a witness to that. You see, that's where the life flow is. That's where the power is at. That's what God has anointed you to be that spirit of prophecy, given the testimony of Jesus, the thing that you live and you know, everything the Holy Ghost has taken you into and has established you in, that you are a witness and nobody on planet Earth can witness that like you can. And I guarantee you, you've been through stuff nobody else has even imagined before. And they've been through stuff that you could imagine. But here's the thing. It's the living word. It's what God birthed in you. You were the eyewitness to it. You experienced it by the Spirit. The Spirit and the Word come together and put that life, that anointing, that testimony in you. It became a living testimony when you became a witness of the things that God did and has done for you. Amen? Amen. Excuse me. So God's moving us. God's moving us out of a place of complacency. Uh, we've been, I mean, I, I believe you probably have a drive stronger than mine where you just push hard and move and go and go and, and you're headlong. But I think we've been going headlong in the wrong direction. I, I think we wanted to make a good show in the flesh. We wanted to be confident that, well, we've done well. Thank you, Lord. You've blessed me. I've got all these things, or I've done all these different things. And, and God said, well, where am I at and all that stuff? Amen. Amen. I mean, I, years ago, a guy got my attention. This, I guess the Holy Ghost did uh, early on. And he said, you can tell how much you're really committing and giving to God of your life. He said, just check your checkbook. Who's getting the most? You or God? Sure. The things you want to do, the things you want to entertain yourself with and stuff, or God? Mm. And I'm telling you, it put me on my face. And it was a blessed thing because when it did, when I came out of that, I had a whole new reality. Yeah. And, and God set me up. Praise God. Set me up for a blessing that he's still blessing me with after 35 years. We had little to nothing. I think the widow who put the two mites at the temple, we were close. I maybe had a little bit more than the two mites. But the thing was, is the Lord permitted me by his own voice to give everything I had. Everything that was in my checkbook. Everything that me and Linda had to raise our kids off of and pay the bills and everything else. He spoke it to me to do it and, and I'll be honest with you I was afraid to tell Linda what the Lord said and I looked at her and I told her and she said the Lord told me to give everything I said that's exactly what he told me now it's me and her this is not an open conversation and I'm not bragging on me I'm telling you what the Lord can do and this is, this is what he did we wrote it out for every penny we had 
in that checkbook. Never told anybody. We just folded up. There's three, 400 people in the place. Dropped it in the offering. Just went on. And we're just thanking God that we had the opportunity to do it. We're two weeks from the paycheck. We hadn't been shopping. We had anything. Everything we had was in that checkbook. And uh, the guy that was ministering was from California. Probably six offering plates piled. In any case, when the, when the ushers are taking the offering plates to the back, he goes, oh, no, 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 no. He said, bring them back. So they brought him back. And he's, he's just, he's not even looking. He's just filling them. And, and he moves the first one out, moves the second one out, moves the third one out. And in that fourth one, he pulls some out and said, y'all can go now. In that check, he said, God told you to give everything, everything, and you did. He tore that check up. He said, God's already blessed you 100%, and it's just starting. Do you know from that point, we needed nothing? We needed nothing. You see, that was an opportunity for me, and I'm not saying do that. I'm just saying, that's what God spoke to me. And then he gave me the courage and lent her the courage to do it. And we did it. And we were happy that we could do it. And I, I can't tell you how far in debt. I know we were just, just from Crystal. We, we had taken Crystal to the hospital in St. Just. We had twelve. We had ten, twenty thousand dollars worth of debt there. We've had debt over two hundred and fifty thousand. Do you know he paid it all off? He paid it all off. He paid this building and property off. Not for me, but for the church. And he paid it off 14 years early with the fewest amount of people we've ever had in this place, with the lowest offerings we've ever had in this place. Don't, don't run on the forbidden knowledge. God speaks a language that is a lie. If you hear him, it will change your life forever. I mean, it will change your life forever. The very instant you start trying to challenge what God's telling you to do, you're getting in trouble. It should be a little red flag comes up. Do you know God's trying to bless you? Amen? I didn't decide in my heart I was going to give everything so God would owe me. I heard the Spirit of God. Now, there's things that we're pursuing. I'm not just talking about money. I'm talking about relationships. I'm talking about aspirations. Anything going on. Who put that in you? Is it the challenge of a world system? Is it God? Is it the Holy Ghost? Is it a personal thing so you can show everybody? Are you afraid that you're not going to have enough? I mean, are you afraid you're going to be alone? I mean, what's, what's the thing? Why, what is driving us? I'm going to tell you what ought to be driving us is the Holy Ghost of God. The, the living Word of God should be driving us we're talking about back to the basics. You don't get no more basic than that. And, and what rings in my head is what Jesus said. I only, I only say what I hear the Father say. I only do what I see the Father do. Oh, come on, Jesus. You're an educated guy, man. You know the scripture, you know everything. It's not what you know. It's what your Father wants done. Amen. It makes no difference if you're after mowing the yard when dad told you to polish the car. Amen? It, it's what he wants. You see, obedience is better than sacrifice. Yes. But I'm going to tell you, one moment, one moment of obedience with God, one moment has carried me 35 plus years. And I've not wanted, I've not needed Father's blessed me beyond anything I could imagine. You understand what I'm saying? Not only that, what I was, and, and I'm, I'm, I hate that I'm even mentioning me because I don't want you to see me. I want you to see the kingdom of God and the ways of the kingdom. I was carried into the heavenlies by the Spirit of God in a vision. And before me was just about everything you could say, you could think of. I mean, there was food, there was just properties. There was all these things. And God said, I'm going to bless you. What do you want? Take, you. Take anything you want. It's yours. I said, Father, I don't want anything I can see. 
I want your wisdom. I want your wisdom. I want to know what to do with my life. I want to know how to honor you with the truth. And, and as, as I stand here right now, I can feel his hand go in my head. And it just felt like he just filled me to overflowing. I'm still looking for the wisdom. But I felt, I mean, I experienced, I experienced that of God in my life. And, and wisdom gives you the ability to, act, to apply things. That had been my thing. I have ministered all across this country. I've ministered in other countries. Television, radio, all these different things. I've done conferences. I've done ordination services. and all, You name it. The only thing I ever wanted by the people I was having a relationship with, ministers and stuff, is how do we apply this to our life? How does this help my brothers and sisters? How does this help me? How does this help us move from where we are to where our Father wants us to be? I never got it. They didn't know. They didn't know. And, and to be honest with you, they never really asked. But I'm going to tell you, we need to ask. Why would God tell you to seek first the kingdom of God? He could have said it in any order. You know, somewhere along the line, you need to get in touch with my kingdom. Somewhere along the line, you need to really build a good relationship. He said, don't do anything else. First of all, come and get me. Yes. We did. But you know what? Today can be that first day. God caused the sun to move back an hour. I believe he can restore the years that the world has eaten up. Amen? Amen. Uh, I believe we haven't lost our life. I think we're just finding it. I think we're coming into the revelation knowledge of the Spirit of God because he wants you to possess the kingdom. Most of Christianity is trying to get in the kingdom. He says, no, no. My kingdom's in you. I want you to learn how to function and operate my kingdom in the earth so my will can be done so that the lame can walk, the blind can see, the poor will have the gospel ministered to them too, just like others. Amen? Amen. That darkness will be put away, that justice will be lifted up and injustice will be cast down in the streets. Hallelujah. I mean, that's what we're here for. We're not here to see if we can get a better job and get all the other... That, that is the life pursuit of the stupid things that has eaten us up and it eats us and it'll keep you awake at night and it'll cause you to fight and to argue and to have all kinds of differencing opinions with the person you love the most or the ones you love and care the most about. The enemy will use them to drive a wedge between you and fight you and tear you and do everything he can. When that's happening, realize that's not the thing God told you to pursue. Amen. Amen. Love one another. He said, you want to please me? Just love one another. I want you to love them the same way you would love yourself. Amen? I mean, that's, he said, if, if you can't love them, what makes you think you love me? Amen? And he said, there's no greater love that you could ever have but lay your life down for your friends. Amen? Amen. We, we, unfortunately, I think we've laid our friends down yes. over the years so we could pursue our life. Well, we know where that comes from. Yeah. But here's the thing is, is, where do we go from here? I want to tell you, get back to the basics. Get back to numero uno. And it's not you. It's him. Amen? Amen. He wants to sit with you. I feel it in the spirit. He wants to sup with you. He wants to invite you to his table. He wants you to come in and sit down and eat with him. And he wants you to rest in him and with him. He wants to take out all those thorns and all that brokenness and everything that's come along over the years and do away with it and get it away from you and keep you from going back in that briar patch. Amen? Amen. It's, it's, it's my father's divine design. We've talked about it for years that there's a divine design. Well, this one is you and him. And it all starts there. Amen? If you want to stop the hurt, then 
and, and stop the stupidity and stop the ridiculousness and stop the things that are just going in circles around and around and around. It all stops at him. It all stops at him. And when we know that, I'm going to tell you the, the first thing you're going to come to realization is his love for you. He loves you so much. He sent his son to endure everything he could just to get you the door open for you to get to him. He wants you to know that love like you've never known it before. Because when you know that love, you know everything else he's told you is true. You realize that he knows you better than you know yourself. The things he said you can do, you can really do them. You, you can really forgive sin and that sin will be gone. You can really lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Amen? I mean, these are the things that when, when we're pursuing that, he starts adding everything to you. You will, you will never be ashamed. You will never be in need of anything. Because your father pours out more upon you than you could ever contain. He just knows that it needs to be given to others without expectation. Amen? When we give, don't expect to give back. Just give. Just, just, just pour it out. And when God loves on you, go love on somebody. When God's giving you wisdom, go give some wisdom to somebody. Don't pass judgment on their opinions and their thoughts and everything. Just go love and show mercy. Show grace. We need to start receiving each other the same way he received us. There's not a one of us was perfect and clean and whole and had everything right when he accepted us. As a matter of fact, we were probably as wrong as we could possibly get. He said, yeah, I kind of like them. Let's take them. Uh, God's wanting to help. Amen? Amen. God's not going to do everything for us. He wants us to come to him, receive from him, and let him live the life that we will remember for eternity through us. Amen? Amen. Now I'm going to be good and at least go to one of these. <coughs> Excuse me. 1 Corinthians 2.12 Now we have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit which is of God that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Amen? The, we, we are at a precipice. We're at a threshold. Not just in our lives. This world is. Christianity I'm going to tell you, God's done with religion as we've known it. He's finished with it. It only glorifies itself. It only honors itself. It, it's like a Robin Hood. It takes from the poor and gives to the rich. It allows the rich to keep more and more and the poor to suffer more and more. But they'll pray for them more. It's, it's just a completely uh, defunct system. Religion has left Christ out, and Christ has left religion to itself. Kind of like what Jesus said all day long. I stretched out my arms to you. I would have gathered you in as a mother hen does her chick. But you would not, therefore your house is left to you desolate. I'm going to tell you, religion and Christianity as we have known it is going to be desolate. It's not God's. Jesus said, you'll see the house that I built. You, you think all of this stuff we've been looking out here and, and here or anywhere else, that's not what he built. That's what we did to try to honor him. God don't need us to honor him. God's worthy of honor. Amen. He's worthy. And, and when we see the church that Jesus Christ builds, we'll wonder how we ever got by. How, did we, how were we ever content? I'm going to tell you, don't think it's strange if God turns your life upside down. If he does, let him shake it. Let him shake it. Willingly. Love him. Thank you, Lord. I needed this. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Father. May I have another? Right. 
Because, you see, God loves you more than he loves anything you could possibly bring or give to him. God's not interested in what you produce from your life. He's interested in your life. He's bringing us to that time. Amen? Amen. So here, we, we get an understanding. What's the first thing he wanted us to have after we came into and received the salvation, received Jesus Christ, our true salvation? The first thing he wanted to do was get to the Spirit. Why? So that you can know the things freely given to you by God. Eddie, how free is free? That's pretty free, ain't it? Free is free. What does that mean? That means you're not doing it by the sweat of your brow. That means your Father is freely giving you these things. But we don't know about those things because we didn't seek the kingdom first. But he wants us now to go back and do the first work. Amen? Remember what he told Ephesus? You've left your first love. Go back and do the first works. The first works he wants us to do is, is to find out about the kingdom. And Thursday night, I'm going to show you that the Father came and did set his kingdom up. We're not waiting for him to come back and do it. He's already done it. As a matter of fact, he's already turned it over to you. And I'll prove it to you by the scriptures. Amen? Amen. We're going to start that when we come back Thursday. And um, we're, going to, we're going to get that solidified because most of Christianity not only believe that God withdrew the offer of the kingdom until Jesus shows back up, that they believe that everything that is professed to be in the kingdom is of the devil. Believe it or not. So, God's wanting to manifest the life of the kingdom. And who better to do that than the ones who possess the kingdom? But we need that foundation to stay on because the enemy's going to fight you with this. He's not going to like it because you're going to up, plow up, root up, pluck up, cast down and throw down stuff that's been accepted for hundreds of years, even in Christianity. But here's the good thing. We're, we're giving up the bad so we can have the truth. You see, God's shaking what needs to be shaken because it's doing damage to us. How much damage is it doing to somebody to, to tell them a lie, you, you don't have the kingdom when you do. It would be like Tim having an inheritance of $50 million and, and then tell his the attorney saying, I'm oh, sorry, dude, you didn't get nothing. But they'll come back one day. It may come back around. That's what, Christ, that's what they've done to Christianity. Oh, no, you didn't get the kingdom. It was close. It was close. If these people who killed the guy who brought the kingdom would have accepted it, then we'd all have it. But since they rejected him, God said, no, I'm not going to do it. It wasn't for them. It was for God's children. It was for God. And they were. The first three and a half, almost really seven years, everyone who came into the kingdom were all of the nation of Israel. Jesus said, I'm not sent to any but the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's all. And he told his disciples, don't go to any. But the lost sheep of the house of Israel. On the day of Pentecost, 50 days after the crucifixion, the 3,000, guess what? All Jews. You see, they, they want, religion wants us to believe that the church is Gentile and God's only using that till he comes back for the Jew. No, we're all in this together right now. Amen. And we have been since day one. But the problem is, God wants his kingdom be manifest. Paul taught us a great revelation. The kingdom of God is not in word or even in deed. It's in power. The system can't produce the power. That comes from the Holy Ghost of God. God is going to move through you in power. Amen? It was pretty awesome about a month ago, maybe three, three four weeks ago, I got a minister this uh, in a couple of weeks down in Tennessee and the congregation down there had been praying for me and the senior minister called and said, God keeps saying power, power. He's, he's, he's speaking to you power. I said, that's exactly what he's been saying. That's exactly what we've been talking about. Because it's about his kingdom. If you don't have his spirit, you don't have him. 
Why is it that we wouldn't have power? Only because we wouldn't have the Spirit. And we wouldn't have power because we didn't have the Spirit. And you wouldn't have the Spirit if you didn't have Him. If you have Him, then you have His Spirit. And if you have Him and His Spirit, you have power right now. Amen? Amen. Now God is going to unleash that power over the next few weeks. I know that's what He's doing. Amen? Will you let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus? That although he was in the form of flesh, he didn't think it robbery to be equal with God. Wow, I got quiet. Got a lot of blank looks. I'm not equal with God. What if God says you are? Let every man be a liar. Let God be true. Amen. Now, if you want to go out and make yourself equal with God, you just blew it. But if God says, I've made you one with me, then that's exactly what he means. It's revelation. It's the functioning of the kingdom. It's, it's how God moves through his word and through his spirit in his kingdom. That's the way the laws that govern the kingdom are set up. That the, the power of God only functions in accordance with the law of the one who has been established by God. And in order for God to have that working in you, he made you one with him. Hallelujah. We'll get to that. But the desire of God is for us to walk in his power. Seek the kingdom. Seek that right relationship with him. He's going to uproot, uproot some stuff. I guarantee you there's stuff in your life that's been giving you fits for some period of time, and, and you did, You just wanted to fight through. You wanted to prove that you can win this. I can change that. I can make it better. What if God says, just let go of it? Amen? Uh, how many times have you tried to fix something for somebody, and you couldn't fix it because they wouldn't leave it alone? Every time you thought you had it fixed, before the glue would dry or something else, they'd come and get it, or they'd go do something that they shouldn't do with it. I think God's going to tell you, leave some stuff alone. Just leave it alone. Leave it to him. Let him fix it. If you, if you love him and you love that, whatever it is, then love it enough to give it to him. Call it a sacrifice. Call it an offering. Or whatever. But I'm, I'm letting you know prophetically that the Spirit of God is going to be calling on you to turn some things over to him. Amen? Amen? Be willing to do that. Don't expect to get it back. Don't say, well, I'm going to give it because I'm not going to get it back. No, just let him have it. And know that he loves you enough. He's going to do the right thing with it. Amen? He may fix it and bring it right back to you. And he may carry it so far away you never see it again. Trust him. He knows what he's doing. Amen? He's going to readjust our focus and he's going to set our feet on the rock. And we're going to stand like we've never stood before. And we're going to have the wisdom of God. We're going to have the knowledge of God. And we're going to have the understanding of God. And we need all three of those. And they all three come through one spirit. And when those three line up, and when those three agree as one, the spirit that we have received will manifest what it is that the Father's revealed. Amen? Amen. It's the way of the kingdom. Jesus said, I am the way, and I'm the truth, amen, and I'm the life. Well, those three are coming together in one, amen. Hallelujah. Father, I bless you. I thank you, Lord, for the opportunity, Father, to, as we begin this, Father, help us to receive and to breathe in the life of your spirit. And those things, Father, that you knocked on our door tonight, there's people we were challenged just by things, Father, that, that you were knocking on. Help us, Father, to accept your knock on the door and open the door to that part of our life. Let you do what you want to do. We've done what we've wanted to do, Father, for so long, and it just simply has not come out the way that we thought it was. That by your grace, we trust you. We love you. We believe you, Father. 
that as we seek first the kingdom of God, which you place inside of us and a right relationship with you, Father, we know, we know you're going to add everything to us because our life here is not ours. It's yours. And you will provide for your own. You're no infidel. We thank you, Father, that sometimes it's just bare and it's raw and it's plain. But I thank you. It's all you. And we bless you, Father. I know you're stirring in everybody, Father, and they're going to be awakened in the night. They're going to be even shook during the day to pay attention to what's happening, what's going on, what is that releasing in their life, how to eliminate that, and how to yield and give things over to you. And Father, I thank you that the work that you have begun here tonight, this night, just by the sowing of the seed, which are words that are spirit and they are alive, and that they will begin to stir and move in every one of our beings, those watching by video, listening by audio, those in this room. Father, I thank you that your spirit and your word have agreed together in one, and you are making alive the hidden truths, the things that the forbidden language can never talk about. But this is the language of life. And by your grace, Father, we will eat of that tree and be satisfied. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen.